Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Jeff Kofer with RICO. I am a production specialist. I'm here at RJ Young in Nashville. And we're going to do a demo this morning, a product demonstration for the C5300. Um, this is our newest in class of uh, sort of entry level color digital presses. Um, 5300, as you see it here, is configured with a large capacity of a tray, a, an SR5120 book maker. This is a 65 page a minute um, color press that is really our Swiss Army knife. Um, it can do some of everything. You can upgrade your office MFP to this and save money on the clicks. Uh, you can do a number of different applications, whether it's printing business cards or posters. Uh, it fits in a number of different industries, whether you're talking about print for pay or enterprise work groups or churches, uh, so everything in between. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get started. Um, this device, uh, we're talking about 65 pages a minute, uh, 2400 by 4800 dpi. Uh, that's press quality, offset press quality. Um, as it's configured here, uh, we have a bypass tray. We can have 500 sheets go through there. We have a large capacity input tray here that can hold up to 2200 sheets of 13 by 19.2 inch paper. Unit itself, we've got your CMYK uh, cyan magenta black uh, yellow toner. We got the inside of the device. What we're looking at here, one of the reasons this is such an efficient machine is the short paper path. So the paper is going to come directly from there or there or up from the bottom sheets or trays uh, and pass through here. It's going to be registered using our uh, mechanical registration and um, pass through the tray, have the image laid down one color at a time, and then if it's double sided, it'll go, uh, be flipped around and duplexed and do it again. Uh, it'll pass through here into the bookle maker. It'll come up and uh, the bookle maker, it's called the SR5120. It's 120 sheets of 20 pound bond. Um, you know, it would be fewer sheets if you go thicker or coated. Uh, this device can handle any kind of material. Um, the book maker is here, and uh, book will come out there. Regular sheets will come out here or here. You've got a stacker that can hold 2,500 sheets uh, here and another 1,000 up top. A lot of people think this is a cover interposer, but it's just another tray to stack. And so that, in a nutshell, is the device. What I haven't talked about is the number of different ways you can use this device. Um, what we have here is a uh, fiery command workstation. This is the front interface if you have a fiery grip or a fiery digital front end on your color device. Um, it's a job queue. You can do color management, color adjustment. You can do composition, imposition, and if you'll come take a look, I'll show you a little bit more of what I mean by an imposition. So I'll import a job, and hit this button, and whether it's something on a computer or a USB device, I've already loaded it here. This is your whole queue, all right? This is where the jobs will live until they're printed. Uh, after they're printed, they'll obviously go to the printed or archive uh, queue. But what we have is three different print jobs. We've got a poster, we've got business cards, and we've got a, uh, a mailing uh, postcard. And so we'll show you each of those here. But if I was to have a single postcard file, you could actually hit impose, and that would, well, it would, it would go several up on a page. So let me show you this. So we're going to right click, go to Impose. So that's going to pull up another feature that's our, our file building, our file building, page building uh, screen. All right, so here you're going to see the front and the back of the file. That's one file, two pages. So in order to make sure that it prints correctly front to back, you know, we'll have to register it. 
but this is a six by nine card and we're printing on 12 by 18 page or sheets. So when we do one per sheet, that's a whole lot of paper we're wasting. So what we're gonna do is put a two up on the sheet. So we're gonna do that by going the gang up, going to repeat. Set our sheet size to 12 by 18. I don't really like the way that looks, so I'm going to change it to landscape. And you can't see on the camera, but this has already got crop marks for the full bleed to, to trim after it's printed. Uh, if we wanted to, we could go down here and increase the number of rows. Doesn't look like that's going to fit, so we're going to go back down to two. Of course, you can go up on the number of columns. Of course, that's not going to fit either. Um, you can add a gutter have a full bleed and you need to add some space in between. Uh, you scroll down here, you can add margin, you can put marks, you can go in and find all marks, you can measurements in, stroke color width, etc. Because uh, we can actually put a job label on here. So we'll print the name of the job and the time of the day it was printed. And that'll show up here on top of the sheet for uh, tracking and, and job taping purposes. When we're done here, we're going to save. We go to the help queue. And here at the top is our new file. We'll preview it just to make sure it is what we think it is. Okay, so we've got our two up as opposed to the one on the file that was sent to us. We've got our crop marks, we've got our job label. Looks like we're ready to go. So the next step here, I'm gonna check the properties to make sure that we're gonna print on the right paper and that the machine knows where the paper's from. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fix the simplest mistake people make on this device. So let's start here in media. There's no media defined. Um, I know we want 12 by 18, that's already programmed in. I'm going to tell it to pick from the large capacity tray. I know that the paper is paper weight 6. Now all is OK. Layout, it's imposed, so we don't have to adjust the, the duplex, say. And the job info, let's say I want three copies of this. Hit OK. I could have printed from that screen, but I should just come back out just because I that's how I hold. So we're going to print and hold, <clears throat> meaning keep it on the held screen after it's done. And it's ripping the file, meaning it's processing it. Oh no, we have an error. What do we do? So I come over and I hit my check status button. And it tells me oh, there's an error that occurred at the DFE, at the fire. So I check and find out what's wrong. And the paper has been misassigned meaning that the machine didn't know that the paper, even though it is 12 by 18, was the weight of paper because it hadn't been saved here yet. Uh, so this is easily fixed. I come and just tell it manually which tray to pull from, and voila, there we go. So the warm-up time on this machine is about three minutes. Uh, that's about the fastest in the industry that's improved over the next two generations, or uh, sorry, the previous two uh, generations of this machine. I mentioned earlier this is an entry-level color press, so the 5300 is the lowest level investment color press that Rico makes. The next step up is the 7200 and the 9200. It's important to know the technology in this device, which you can get for you know, relatively the same price as a high-end office copier, uh, is the same in all of our color devices. That 2400 by 4800 DPI uh, starts here. It's carried on the 7200 and the 9200. The differences are the two models of this unit, 5300 is 65 pages a minute, the 5310 is 80 pages a minute. When you move to the 7200, you move to 85, 95 pages a minute, and you get the benefit of adding a fifth color. We're not going to talk about that here. But fifth color technology in the 7200 is something we're very proud of. Uh, moving up to the 9200, it's a much uh, more robust device, uh, much higher monthly volume. Uh, you're talking about 115 and 130 
five pages a minute in color. The reason you would move from this press to a 7200 to a 9200 would be the thickness of paper and the monthly expected volume. So this device, whereas the predecessor to this, the 5200, this device is about 95% capable as the 7200 is. It's missing some of the internal uh, color measurement uh, pieces, but speed, paper thickness, and monthly duty cycle up to 150,000, it is a very robust color press. Uh, when you get to the, the 7200, it's the same thickness of paper, 130 pound or 360 GSM, auto duplex from every tray, um, or 240,000 when you use the 7200 uh, is the recommended monthly maximum. When you go to the 9200, you can um, print up to 470 GSM, which is 28 point paper, which is basically cardboard. Uh, and you can do up to a million color sheets a month with the 9200. So, but same technology in your very affordable C5300. So here we've got our duplex printed, highly registered front to back postcards. This is something you can apply to business cards. that we've got here, front and back business cards. Uh, you can do variable data work with this press. Print posters up to 13 by 19.2 inches. So it's a very versatile machine. Like I said, it's got a book of paper. As far as finishing goes, you can get a paper stacker on here. You can get an inline GBC punch uh, for coil bound booklets. Uh, you can put a cover in poster on here. Like I said, a stacker. Uh, folding units, the list really goes on and on. Everything that is available in the RICO production portfolio as a finishing module will now go on this device. And previously that has not been the case and, and this machine has been out for about a year. Uh, so we're very proud of it and again as RJ Young is you know one of our larger dealers uh, in the US, uh, we expect them to sell dozens if not hundreds. So do you have any questions? Yeah, I've got a couple questions. Um, if, if an office or a print for pay provider is going from a mid-level basic MFP multifunction printer like the two in here, like the, what, the one we see over there, um, what capabilities do I get when I move up to the 5300? So I mentioned advanced finishing. Uh, whereas an office MFP may only have a, um, a smaller staple finisher or a smaller Book of Maker, maybe an 80 page Book of Maker. Uh, you can get a larger Book of Maker here. Um, the other inline punching, most any copier will do a two or three hole punch, but for GBC punching, that's something completely different. It, it's for bellow binding and uh, cone binding, coil, uh, color coil, wire binding. You can actually get a module on this unit that will do the binding for you and we'll just punch it. They'll actually make it look and crimp the ends. But aside from finishing, um, the other benefit to using a production device versus an office MFP is the click rate. So while this is going to have a higher lease payment, every click you print on this press is probably going to be about 60% of the cost of an office MFP because this is what we call a single click. So the single click means a large sheet up to 13 by 19, basically costs the same as any small sheet on a copier. So, uh, not to quote prices, but you know, on um, this device, anywhere from four to five cents for one side of the sheet. Now, if you're printing two eight and a half by 11s, all of a sudden you cut your cost in half. Um, on a regular MFP, each eight and a half by 11 is going to cost you four to five cents at least, depending on the age of your machine. And what weight is that paper? This is about 80 pound cover, that's what it feels like. The other benefit, like I said, is 130 pound cover, that's business card stock, I mean thick business card stock. Typically, you can't run more than about 80 pound cover through office MFPs, or what we call light production. And when you do that, you tend to see service more frequently. The quality is also not there. Uh, 4800 EBI on this device, most copiers are in the 1200 EBI range, and Again, the 
focus here is to emulate an offset frame for us. Speaking of color quality, so if I wanted to match a logo, like we're very proud of the RJ one, RJ Young logo here, and I want my colors to match. I know that I can't match those accurately on a lot, lot production machine or a mid volume. Yeah. Okay. So the fire rate enables you. Um, you can't see the fire rate on the back of the stand over here. Fire rate is a print server with software installed. Um, if you have a spectrophotometer, which is a uh, color density measuring device, you can use that to color match with options available for the fire. So, for instance, let's say you have Home Depot orange is your color. You can scan the Pantone color that they have designated as their corporate color, and it'll bring up, uh, we don't have the option installed here, but it'll bring up um, a set of choices for you to choose from. And visually, you'll be able to look and match and say, this is the one that's most closely matching. When you're talking about what I'm, what I'm talking about is spot colors. Um, spot colors are single colors. Like when you buy a can of paint, it is one color. When you're printing on a press like this, you're printing in four color process. And sometimes, especially with bright colors, oranges, reds, blues, even grays, it can be difficult to match exactly um, the color we're talking about because of the gamut of any machine, not just our press. And so the, the tools, um, it's called Spot On, Spot Pro, Fiery. Uh, it allows you to easily scan and then choose and match. And whenever the machine sees that color combination again, if you designate it as a saved color in the Fiery, it will remember, ah, this is that orange that they want me to emulate in this fashion. And you can go change that at any time. You can match a number of different color profiles. So if we want to get really technical, um, commercial printers at a very high level can use this low investment machine to do some very high end work. You know, typically, if you're color matching on a, a million dollar printing press, it's a very involved process and it's not cheap. So the, the price point on this is, is much closer to you know, let's say 25,000 as it sits, which is much more affordable to people every day. Yeah. Does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Um, what about registration? You, you mentioned a little bit about the inline registration. On a small office device or a regular MFP, sometimes when you run heavyweight paper, it tends to skew a little bit and drift is what they call Substrates it. Substrates can shrink they can okay. contract. So they how, contract. how does the 5300 handle with registration, especially on heavyweight stocks, because if you're running business cards, you do not want those images to shift on front and back, right? Correct. So the, the published registration, front to back, that means the image on the back is gonna match the image on the front. Now, I'll give you an example here in a minute. Um, the published registration is 0.7 millimeters. It's 7 tenths of a millimeter uh, from front to back, and that's on a large sheet. Now, to give you an example, um, most of our competitors in this space, not to name names, are gonna be anywhere between one to one and a half millimeters front to back registration on a small page. That means up to three millimeters difference. So if the hash marks on my card right here. Can I see the business card? Sure. <clears throat> what we would do is we would hold it up to the light and see through the paper that in fact these do match within a very close range. And most commercial printers, when you go in to see someone doing this, that's what they're doing is they're checking to see that the hash marks match up and that the edges of the image match up. And so I would say this is probably even tighter than 0.7 front to back. And the importance there is when you're talking about, when you're talking about trimming a bleed, the edge of that business card is going to get trimmed off. If you're more than about a millimeter off, you might cut off some very important information like your email address or part of your name or part of your company logo. So the importance of, of front to back registration, um, it's, it's very high, I think, on the list of reasons why you want an automatically adjusting um, registered machine. And so we use what they call a rotary gate to stop 
like when the paper feeds from the capacity, large capacity tray, it'll feed into here and it'll hit a lead edge and then it'll hit a side edge. Now, the importance of this is that's how an offset press feeds. So it'll register this side and register this side and then pull it through and start printing. It'll do it again, but it prints the second side and it's self corrected. So it's a very cool feature and we don't talk about it a whole lot, but it is very important to anybody who sells print for a living. Well, the good news here <clears throat> is if a, a customer comes in and wants short run business cards, now I have the capability to do them on an offset quality uh, digital press here with the, the Rico 5300. Yeah. I agree, and, and the reason we're, we're mentioning offset printing, offset has been the standard for years and years, but it's very time consuming, very expensive to set up. So that by the time you get the machine set just right, you get your color set just right, you have printed 500 to 1,000 pages just to make sure your color's right. Usually, you know, page 801 or something like that, that's where you start your sellable pages. And you avoid all that time and all that expense of setup or prep, um, make ready is what they call it, uh, by having digital press one sheet and that one sheet might cost you five cents. So you've got this configuration here obviously for, for our demo room. Um, I'm looking at the bypass tray on the right hand side. I see that it is small enough for envelopes. Now this is kind of a touchy subject right now in the industry because everyone wants to run full color digital high quality envelopes and maybe a church wants 500 instead of 5,000. Maybe uh, a marketing firm wants a you know a, a thousand. How does the 5300 handle envelopes now? I know it's like I said, it's it's one of the most common things that people are wanting to run short run now. So can you talk? Yeah, about that? sure. So there's an adjuster, a, a side guide, if you will, over here that will allow you to run number nine, number ten. Um, Eight and a half by 11, 9 by 12, 10 by 13 envelopes uh, through the side uh, bypass tray. You can also run uh, envelopes open flap uh, through the large capacity tray. Now, what we don't see here, this unit also has a larger vacuum fed tray that traditionally has been for our larger color presses. Um, with that tray, you can uh, adjust the guides inside and run envelopes open flap with better efficiency, fewer jams. Uh, the thing that you guys don't know just yet is Rico is developing an envelope cartridge, if you will, for that large uh, capacity vacuum fed tray. Uh, it's not available yet, but it will be relatively soon. And it's gonna be something very simple to install. You simply snap it into place magnetically, back it up, and you'll be able to print envelopes closed flat. So. Now I see the adjustment here on the bypass as well. Mm -hmm. So can I do larger sheets here if I just want one or two, Correct. Or five or 10? So one of the cool things about the 5300 is you can print uh, large single sheets uh, anywhere up to 13 inches wide by 49.6 wow. inches in length. That's a simplex print. So you can print two sides, but you have to do it in two different passes. Um, with the large capacity vacuum tray, you have the ability to uh, print internally 13 by 27 and a half, which I think is an 8 and a half by 11 quadfold, um, or trifold. Um, we have other options for our larger presses though, where you can duplex, again, up to 13 by 40 and a half, and simplex 13 by 49 and a half inches. Um, it's a pretty cool feature. I think you can go up to about 110 pound cover okay. on the, uh, the banner sheets, is what we call them. All right, so a couple more questions. Um, this configuration here, like I mentioned earlier, is our demo configuration. If I wanted this machine, but I didn't necessarily need the finishing, I didn't need the high capacity tray, I didn't need the firing, how, how can we configure a very simple device that would give me some of the capabilities that I do not have sure. today on my office machines, but I still get high quality printing. 
Yeah, I understand. So um, this is a relatively scary looking device to somebody who's used to using a copier, maybe in a church or a school. Um, you can order this base unit. You don't need anything over here, just the bypass tray. You really don't need any finisher. Now, we have several different finishers for this, and this happens to be the big one. Uh, but you can get it with just a catch tray on the side and use this wonderful color press as an office copier. Again, the benefits you're going to get there, it's going to be printing on heavier weight paper at a higher quality, faster than a number of these presses. You can print on different substrates like coated media, linen, metallics, all the kinds of paper that you would never put through a smaller MMP like the ones around the room. And, um, well, and one thing I noticed is the document figure. Mm -hmm. So how many sheets do I, do I have here? Because I know my document figure right now is very small. The image scans per minute is 220. So what it does is eight and a half by 11, it will single pass duplex scan is the best way to say it. So it'll scan both sides of the page and it'll build a PDF for whatever you're scanning. If you want to digitize your files or your, your documents. Um, so there is the copy top. Not everybody uses a copier. Uh, there's a fax option available for this device should you so desire. So it can be completely shrunk down into an office machine. It's rather large for an MFP, but that's because it's so wonderful. So if a customer brought in and didn't even want to print off anything, but they had a huge file that needed to be scanned and emailed or compressed or anything like that, I can use the document computer and it scans it. Absolutely, you can sure. network scan, you can scan the USB, scan the laptop that you've attached. Okay. All right, my biggest question now, if I'm going from an office MFP and I put this live production press in my print environment, how easy is it to use? Because it, it, you mentioned earlier, it does look a little scary. Um, I know that we offer training and ongoing support but if, if I've never touched one of these machines, how quick can I learn? So, other than the touch panel, in fact, most of our IMC series uh, copiers now have a touch panel on them. This is exactly the same functionality using it. And you use an Android touch screen? Is that kind of what? Or a similar? It's similar to Android, yes. Um, so, MFPs all have applications, apps, like your phone has apps. And so the great thing about this is you can have it in Fire Info if you want to look at what's on the Fire. Or if you have a user who's not used to Fire, you can go to your um, classic copier screen, which looks like every other Rico copier that has ever been made. You haven't changed the screen in something like 15 years. So I can check, I can select the classic if I want that. Correct. And if you're only using it as a copier, it looks exactly the same, the same as any other new MFP. So it's really easy to use. And of course, like you said, we can come in and train for all the advanced features if you need it. But if not, you know, enjoy the benefits of having a lower clip price and being able to print on heavier weight paper at a higher resolution, different kinds of paper. Uh, and really, by the time you get to a couple thousand sheets a month of your printing, you'll see that it could be cheaper than most MFPs. And um, plug requirements. So this is a higher voltage requirement. You need a 220 volt plug. Um, it's you know it's a production printing press and, and it's designed for that environment. But it is very uh, energy efficient. You know, we passed all the the energy efficiency, uh, energy star compliance, etc. Okay. All right. Thanks so much for your time, Jeff.